Now we're gonna move to the external anus, okay? So here's the anus. We, we have all those beautiful pelvic floor muscles surrounding that, but that's not what your anus is gonna look like. Your anus is gonna be more like this, although that's not exactly what it's gonna look like either, but it's a hole there. And then you have these little lines going out like that star or the sun, like sun, sun beam rays going out, okay? First off, looking, looking at the appearance. In addition to everything that we looked at before with the appearance, I would also say, um, look at, do you see any fecal matter? So sometimes you can have uh, some feces that kind of get stuck in the, those little stars. It's called the rugae, those little star grooves, okay? So is there a little bit of fecal matter there or is there, you know, more or nothing? Okay, so we're looking at moles, rashes, bumps, uh, growths, discoloration. Also, if you had fissures, so anal fissures can be very, very difficult to treat. And, uh, but it's important, especially if you have anal fissures to get your baseline, to understand how things are looking, how things are moving. Now we're here at this anus and we're gonna do light pressure. So starting around the anus, kind of working like that clock, pressing light pressure, and then deeper pressure, deeper pressure, okay? Something to note, I never want you to go from here up to the vaginal canal or the urethra. That's why we're starting at the top and working down. If you did need to go up, you would take your hands away and go wash your hands, and then you would go straight here. You'd never want to introduce anything from here up. Okay. So light pressure, deep pressure. Um, we're going to do insertion in just a minute. Uh, scar tissue. So is there scar tissue? Remember with those uh, perineal tears, if you had a third or fourth degree tear, that went all the way into the anus. And so how did that scar, how does the scar tissue feel? Uh, is, and is the movement restricted? Is it now moving well? So doing side to side, up and down, feeling how that scar tissue is moving. And even if you don't have scar tissue, just feeling how things are moving in this area. Okay. And then when you're working in this area, is this sending any symptoms somewhere else? And if it is, write it down and then you have your baseline and you want to follow up your, with your healthcare provider. Say, hey, when I do this, I feel hip pain or I feel numbness down my leg or whatever it is. Hopefully you have no referred symptoms, but understanding where you are is a baseline. Now we're moving to the coccyx, which is the tailbone. So here's our pelvis, pubic bone, and the tailbone. Here's the anus. So you have pelvic floor muscles that attach right onto that tailbone. The tailbone is a very special structure, uh, and it's a somewhat delicate structures. So as you're checking the tailbone, what I would do is actually um, kind of get on the sides of the tailbone. So you're on the sides of it. You're not pushing straight down on it because uh, you actually can manipulate that tailbone. This tailbone can be damaged or broken as with a variety of things. One of them is childbirth. Another is like falling and landing on your tailbone. Uh, but those are just two examples. So checking the tailbone and checking the sides. Okay, so, so how does it feel? Light pressure, light pressure, deep pressure. I would not put deep pressure on your tailbone, although I do want you to feel the position of it, okay? So literally, you're going to kind of find your sacrum, and you're moving down, and that tailbone is very, very close to the anus, okay? So you're going to kind of put your finger on that tailbone, and 
you're feeling, again, remember this is very, very light. You're feeling what position that is in. Is it flexed? So is it hyper flexed? So sometimes that tailbone kind of gets stuck in this uh, hyper flexed position, or is it the other way? Is it kind of extended and sticking out? Uh, that would be very difficult. Either one of those can cause significant pain and dysfunction and, and tailbone pain and sitting pain, uh, even sex pain and all kinds of pain. But uh, especially if that tailbone was point, it was extended. So it was kind of like that, that would be very uncomfortable to sit. So definitely um, see a pelvic floor physical therapist. Uh, sometimes chiropractors do this, osteopaths, but somebody that does tailbone uh, manipulations and work. And of course, I'm biased. I'm a pelvic floor PT, so I think that's where you should go first. But um, you know, there are some other providers that can help you with that too. Okay, so we're checking that tailbone. Uh, is there scar tissue? Unlikely, but it's possible. Okay, uh, it, and especially you know, if you had any kind of orthopedics, um, orthopedic surgeries or spinal surgeries, you know. It, but checking that out. Um, in terms of movement, so our next category is restricted movement. I would just see about the tissue on either side of it. And I would also do like, okay, so that's the anus and then this would be the tailbone. Kind of stretching the tissue like that. How is the tissue moving? But I'm not pushing straight on that tailbone. Okay. And then are there any referred symptoms when you're doing that? Now we have the ischial tuberosities. So if you remember back to the identify se uh, segment, we found out how to find our sit bones. But basically, these are called your ischial tuberosities. Let me back up here and put your hands, sit on your hands and kind of rock back and forth. And you should feel a bone on either side underneath your hands, okay? Those are your sit bones. So look at your sit bones, all right? So grab that mirror, uh, especially if you're sitting a lot or if you bike ride, you may actually even have some calluses or some really rough skin under the, under the sit bones. And if you do, okay, you do identifying that you do and knowing that that's your baseline, that's fine, okay? Um, feeling, well, so you're looking at it, looking at the skin, making sure that everything looks normal. And then the actual sit bones themselves, are they painful? Generally, you know, the actual bones uh, aren't painful. So you're, you're gonna come inside and you're pressing up on those pelvic floor muscles and that tissue underneath. So doing light pressure, kind of rocking back and forth. And depending on your anatomy, you may have to really, really go through several layers of tissue to get to those muscles. And then deep pressure. And so this is gonna take some really good finger strength. You have nerves under here. So this is an area where you have something called your pudendal nerve, okay? So pressing up, if you feel any pain or numbness or tingling, you may actually be uh, kind of putting some pressure on a nerve. That's not the end of the world. If you, you know, you, you uh, may have hit your funny bone before, okay? And you feel kind of that zinging feeling, okay? You feel that zinging feeling, you're going to stop immediately. So the same thing I would say there. If you feel that zinging, it's pretty difficult to access the pudendal nerve from the outside. Like you'd have to be really, really aggressive and kind of getting way in there and kind of underneath. But just understanding that, that there are nerves in there. So is light pressure painful? Is deep pressure painful? There's no insertion that happens here. Is there any scar tissue that you see or feel? Uh, is there restricted movement? So one side doesn't move as well as the other, whether in or side to side. And then how is your sensation? So does it feel normal side to side? Is one side hypersensitive or is one side hyposensitive where it has numbness? 
face, and then also the referred symptoms. So when you press, are there referred symptoms that go somewhere else? So those that's a self-check of your ischial tuberosities. Lastly, in this category, we have the anal canal and we have insertion in the anal canal. So I would check it very similar to how I check the vaginal canal. I would only check this if you're wanting to insert something into the, into the anal canal. So if you, if that's not a personal preference of yours that you want to insert anything into the anal canal, I would skip this because uh, we definitely want things to be able to exit the anal canal, but in terms of insertion, if it's not a goal for you, then I don't see any reason why you need to do a self-check. But if this is a goal for you, that you want to have something inserted into your anal canal, then doing that self-check. So lubrication is a must. And remembering some of the techniques that we've used with breathing and relaxation, because if you just try to put something straight into the anus, a lot of times those muscles are gonna kind of tighten up. So what I find to be helpful is kind of pressing on the side. So there's that tailbone. So I would just gently press on the side of the anus and then just kind of gently work your way in. And it, as far as the depth, it would really depend on how far you're wanting to go inside and what your purpose is, okay? Um, there are people out there that have to go inside their anus to remove stool because they have stool uh, poop that doesn't come out and they have to go in there and manually remove it. So that's, that's another, that's a non-sexual purpose why you may need to um, insert something into the anus. So you're looking at the appearance, if you can see anything, um, is light pressure painful? And thinking about that clock again. So uh, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock, pr gently pressing on those, um, those clock positions, the anal canal walls, and then you have a deeper pressure. Uh, is there scar tissue inside? So again, if you had that, third or fourth degree tear, or you have anal fissures or hemorrhoids, you may have some scarring in there. Um, when you insert it, does your finger go in nicely or does it feel like there's a blockage? Do you feel poop? You know, you this is where poop comes out. So you very well may feel poop in there. And this actually may even stimulate your desire to have a bowel movement. So if it does, if you feel that urge, go, go have a bowel movement and then you can continue your self-check after that. Uh, is there any restricted movement? Um, how is the sensation? So does it feel normal? Is one side hypersensitive, hypersensitive so ultra sensitive? Is one side kind of numb and you're not feeling it as well? Um, and then are there any referred symptoms? So when you're pressing on that, do you feel it in another area? Do you feel pain? Do you feel numbness or tingling, um, uh, shooting, zinging? Uh, just getting what your baseline is and understanding that. So all of this I know is a lot, but I hope that it gave you a helpful kind of starting point to getting connected with